this is uh, the review questions on uh, differentiations. All right, so let's try to look into some of these questions together. So first one, y equals x squared times e to the x. Well, you can see that this is a product of two functions or two expressions right over here. One being the x squared, the other one being the e to the x. Then we have to use the product rule. So here we have x squared times the derivative of the e to the x, which will be, in fact, e to the x. Plus e to the x and derivative of the x squared, which becomes 2x. So now, in this case, if you combine them together, our answer uh, it seems to be e to the x times x will be common factor. So here we have x e to the x, and we are left with x plus choice c seems to be our answer. All right, next question. Here we have ln of x over x. So in this case, we are looking at the quotient rule. So first, we have to have denominator square. Now, derivative of the top, which basically means 1 over x times x minus derivative of the bottom, which is 1 times ln of x. Now, once you simplify this one, these two cancels out, becomes 1 minus ln of x over x squared. All right, then I guess choice D seems to be our answer. All right, let's move on. Here we have, uh, in fact, uh, x to the ln of x. We have a uh, uh, base and an exponent. Both of them uh, has the uh, variable. And in fact, the one good thing that which we can have is this. Let us assume that y is equal to x to the ln of x. Now, to separate the exponent from the base, one thing which we can do is we, we can uh, put both of them under the logarithm meaning ln of y must be equal to ln of x to the ln of x. You see, uh, by, the prop, uh, by the property of the logarithm, what we can do is we can bring this one to the front. Then, simply this becomes ln of x times ln of x. So now when we take the derivative, here we have 1 over y times y prime. And then here, ln of x times 1 over x plus same thing ln of x times 1 over x and here we have y prime that becomes 2 times ln of x times 1 over x multiplied by y, y itself was the x ln of x so anything that contains this one would have been our answer. All right, that seems to be choice number C. All right, let us move on to the next question. Here, yes, we can do the chain rule, but whenever I have an exponent within the logarithm, uh, what I like to do is I, I like to put them into the exponent because that's uh, one benefit of using uh, logarithm. So one half can come to the front where we have y becomes 1 half ln of x. Now, when we take the derivative, first derivative here becomes uh, 1 over 2x. Now, but when you take the second derivative, then 1 half is already there, but the derivative of 1 over x becomes negative 1 over x squared. Now, and when you combine them together, then our answer seems to be choice B. All right, let us move on to the next question. I believe this is number five. Now, uh, f of x is equal to e to the x and f prime, let's try to do one at a time. f prime of x here would be in fact simple, same as e to the x. Now, but when you plug in two, that means this will be equal to ln of e to the now, by the power rule of the logarithm, 2 can come to the front, and then this becomes simply 2 by itself, which will be choice A. Now, this question is also similar to the one that uh, we have done earlier. Since we have the base and exponent, both of them have the variables. Uh, what we can do is we can assume that y is equal to 
uh, x squared plus 1 to the x power. Now, of course, what we can do is we can put the natural logarithm in both cases. And then taking the derivative, but when we do that, the x can go, go to the front. So we, in fact, have ln of y equals x times ln of x squared plus 1. Then when we take the derivative, we have 1 of y times y prime. And here we have x times the derivative of this becomes 1 over x squared plus 1 times the derivative of the inside, which is 2x plus ln of x squared plus 1 times the derivative of x by itself, which would be equal to 1. So our y prime then becomes, here we have 2x squared by combining the, these two factors over x squared plus 1 plus ln, we're writing this portion right now, x squared plus 1, but the entire thing has to be multiplied by y. y, in fact, was the original expression here, x squared plus 1 to the x power. All right, so then anything that resembles this one would have been our answer, which seems to be choice E. All right, let us move on to the next question. Ln of cosine, <coughs> excuse me, so here we have, first we got to have 1 over cosine of pi over x. Now, the derivative of the second layer, which is cosine, becomes negative tangent of pi over x times the derivative of the innermost, which is pi over x, that means it will be negative pi over x squared. So here, negative, negative cancels out. Oops, I'm sorry. The derivative of cosine becomes negative sine. My bad, I was thinking ahead. So negative, negative becomes positive, and then sine over cosine becomes tangent, to which becomes our answer we end up in choice B. All right, let us move on. Slope of the line normal to this one. That means we need to find the derivative and then get the negative reciprocal of that slope. So here we have y equals 2 ln. Now, um, secant uh, x would be correct, but this, in fact, is equal to 1 over cosine of x. In fact, this one benefit of doing this one would be simply this is equal to negative 2 because of the reciprocal and then of cosine of x. Now, then once you calculate, uh, try to take the derivative of this, then we will have negative 2 times 1 over cosine of x times the in, uh, derivative of the inside, which is negative sine of x. Now, uh, here when you simplify them, we end up getting 2 tangent of x. We're looking at pi over 4. So, uh, since we know that 2 tangent of pi over 4, that will be the derivative of the original function when x equals pi over 4. Now, we know that tangent of pi over 4 will be equal to 1, which simplifies into 2. And then uh, slope of the normal line will not be 2, but it will be negative 1 half, negative reciprocal of the given slope. All right, let's look at the next one here. 2 to the x, that's, in fact, this is rather simple, because when we have a to the x power, where a is the constant, it's simply same as a to the x. We just have to multiply by ln of a. Now then it seems to be choice number C seems to be our answer. All right, the next question here. Here we have, uh, we have actually a few layers going on. Uh, e to the something, we, we just have to write that as it is, e to the tangent square of x. Now, let's take the derivative of the uh, second layer, which is tangent squared. You see the square brings down 2 tangent of x by the power rule. But we have to go for the innermost, which is derivative of the tangent becomes secant 
square x. So anything that contains all these three things will be our answer, which is choice D. All right, here, it looks somewhat complicated, but if you think about it, e to the f of x, this actually is e to the y equals 1 plus x squared. But once we take the ln on both sides, then this becomes rather uh, easy because we will end up getting ln of e to the y power is equal to ln of 1 plus x squared. Now then, uh, left side, it will simplify to y equals ln of 1 plus x squared. Now here we have, uh, when you take the derivative, y prime, then it becomes 1 over 1 plus x squared times by the chain rule, we will end up getting 2x. Now, then we have 2x over 1 plus x squared. Okay, choice B seems to be our answer. Alright, the next question, arctangent. You see, the derivative of arctangent is 1 over 1 plus whatever inside squared. So we're going to have e to the 2x squared. Now, but we have to get the derivative of this which simply is equal to 2 e to the 2x. Now, and if you have to combine everything together, what we end up getting is choice b, because 2x and then 2 has to multiply to become 4x. Here we have, we're going to have the quotient rule. Denominator becomes 2x squared, and then let's take the derivative of the top, which in ends up being 2 e to the 2x times bottom, which is 2x, minus top, which is e to the 2x times the derivative of the bottom, which is 2. Now, then we realize that uh, uh, 2 is the common factor. In fact, it seems when you simplify this one, we'll end up getting 2x e to the 2x minus e to the 2x over 2x squared. Now, I believe that when you factor out e to the 2x, then we will end up getting choice D. All right, that was number 13. Now, the last question, number 14. It looks very complicated. It looks like a product rule with e and ln combined together, but if you look at this section carefully, That, in fact, is equal to, that simplifies to x squared. I mean, many people commonly call, say that e and ln cancels out, but it's, it simplifies into uh, x squared. Now, a one simple way for us to put it would have been something like this. Let us say k is equal to e to the ln of x squared. Now, if you do to uh, take the ln of both sides, then ln of k must be equal to ln of e to the ln of x squared. Of course, this can go to the front. While this one becomes 1, then we will end up having ln of k is equal to ln of x squared. That, must, that means k must be equal to x squared. That's how we can simplify it. Now, then this, in fact, is equal to we want to take the derivative against x, where we have expression x times x squared, which simply becomes x cubed. When you take the derivative of x cubed, then we will end up getting choice C. All right, that's it for now. Have a nice day.